Welcome to DOS Geek. I've been on this huge kick with HP recently, and if you don't know why, then I suggest you check out the video here, here, where wherever the little information link thing shows up, where I talk about the technology supply chain and specifically how HP is consistently ranked at the top for not utilizing slave and forced labor within their supply chain. So I've been on a hunt for all of the best that HP has to offer in the laptop line. And I'll agree with you. If you're one of the people who've had a bad experience with HP in the past, you've bought some of their more budget line items, I get it. There's definitely some cleanup that HP needs to do in its quality assurance program that it has with its laptops. But I've found a lot of amazing ones like the HP Elite Dragonfly, for instance, absolutely love this ultra portable machine. We talked about another machine, the X360 Spectre, which is kind of this hybrid in between portable, really beautiful looking laptop, but also having some ability for desktop performance like applications, but not very good at gaming. And that brings us to this, the HP Omen. This is the HP 15 version of the Omen from 2020 and it packs a lot of punch. You're gonna really like a lot of things about this laptop, but there are some things I would wanna change in it. So let's get into the review of the HP Omen 15 2020 AMD edition right now. Now let's get under the hood of this HP Omen because it packs a lot of punch there. Of course, we have the Ryzen 7 4800H, and that H is meant as a designation from AMD to say that this processor in here is meant for gaming and design work. So if you're doing a lot of video rendering, if you're working with Blender and those type of things, that's what that H represents. In addition, you get the Radeon graphics, but the HP folks weren't done there. They also packed a discrete NVIDIA 2060 inside of here, meaning you are going to have a really good time gaming. For instance, if you're going to play something like Fortnite, you're gonna be easily hitting 144 frames per second, which is great because you have 144 Hertz screen here. Some of these models went all the way up to 300 Hertz, with the screens. So you're definitely going to have a fantastic experience in the gaming realm, whether you're playing CSGO near Automata here in Linux, or whether you're dual booting this and you're playing some games in Windows, the performance is out of this world. And the cooling inside of this machine is fantastic as well. And in a moment, I'll take you inside to show you just how good it is. In fact, the repairability and the fixability of this machine is top notch and that is a big deal for us who've been dealing with the lack of repairability in laptops and seeing more and more manufacturers not just apple but dell and lenovo as well start soldering on more and more and making their laptops less repairable it was really refreshing to get inside this hp and as you can see you have amazing cooling there we have two nvme m2 ssd slots that we can use to upgrade this machine and that's how i got this dual booting one had windows on it already that when it shipped to me and i put another drive in there very easily and put linux on it now talking about the power we want to go to the 16 gigabytes of ddr4 3200 ram in here which is replaceable you have two slots both are replaceable i would say the downside in hardware is the 1920 by 1080 screen I'm not a fan of 1920 by 1080 at this point. We should be well past that, but some manufacturers, of course, are still putting these. In fact, most PC manufacturers are still putting 1920 by 1080 in their mid to low lines of laptops. Very frustrating to see, but at least this is an IPS screen and at least it's at 144 Hertz. One of the things I really like about this laptop is its look here. While it's a gaming laptop, this doesn't look like a kid's toy. It's still stealthy. It's very sexy looking. Look at those fans. You can see those even in here where I'm not filming up close, but I've got this far away. You can see right through that grill and you can see those fans that are sitting right there. It's just excellent. You don't have the top firing speakers, which is a frustration to me. This up here actually is for cooling. And I believe the speakers themselves are sitting here firing off at an angle on the side. So better than firing into your lap, but not much better definitely needs top firing speakers in a gaming setup. Although this does have the Bang & Olufsen speakers in there, they do not have fantastic compatibility with Linux. So you don't get the fantastic sound that you get out of them in Windows 
that you do in Linux. And I'm hoping HP follows the path that Dell and Lenovo has and start making their drivers available for Linux variants so that you can power, I believe it's the extra amp in here that pushes these speakers in Linux, which is an issue we ran across on the entire HP line because they all seem to use the Bing and Olufsen speakers. But this top is plastic and the back is plastic. The only part that's actually metal is here with the keyboard frame, which is really nice because you get literally no movement in the keyboard. It doesn't flex at all. But this top flexes quite a bit. And this hinge on this system is not fantastic. It is quite kind of wobbly. I guess I can't really show it here. Well, you can see it. You can see that's quite wobbly. And here from denting in, look how far that presses in. That's a good view for you to see kind of how cheap. Now, the plastic doesn't feel cheap. It's not like you're you're holding something and immediately go, wow, this is made of plastic and feels cheap. Because there's so much heft to this machine, it actually feels quite solid. And because it's a plastic IPS screen and not glass, you're not going to have an issue where it's going to easily break or shatter if you put books or something else inside. But it's not ideal. They should have at least put um, some type of stakes or something in here to keep this from pushing in so much because that to me makes the laptop feel a lot more cheap than it should. I get using plastic here because everything else is so heavy inside and it's repairable of course as well, which is really nice. Let's give it props for that. Very easy to get into, just a couple screws that you remove. But if you're gonna use plastic, you need to at least make sure that it's nice and firm and protected on the top because a lot of people lay stuff on top of their laptop. As far as ports go, you really couldn't ask for much more. You get a Thunderbolt 3 here. So if you wanna hook up external graphics and those type of things, you certainly can. You get one super speed USB uh, type A with HP sleep and charge. You get another two super speed USB type A connectors as well. They just don't have that smart charge. You get an RJ45 jack on this machine, an AC smart pin, headphone microphone combo, mini display port, and HDMI 2.0 on this. So as far as ports go, it blows the doors off the competition in this arena, uh, especially when you look at laptops nowadays where generally they're putting two USB-C uh, ports on there and that's as much as you get. Battery life on any gaming laptop is nothing to write home about, especially if you're gonna be using the discrete graphics. I've been getting somewhere between four and five hours if I'm not doing heavy work on the machine. So if I'm just doing some basic browsing and things and utilizing that integrated AMD Radeon graphics. If I switch to the Nvidia and I start gaming, you're looking at about two to three hours max out of this, but it's a laptop, it's a gaming laptop. I don't really know many that do much better than this and of course as far as power usage and things the 4800 is amazing but when you've got the nvidia 2060 in there it gets pretty power hungry this thing does heat up it gets hot as you would expect with all these components in here packed together so much but not hot enough you're going to burn your lap or be completely uncomfortable the power adapter as well power supply on the power adapter gets pretty warm so try to keep it off carpeted areas or anywhere where it's smothering it's going to need to breathe but you are you're basically packing a high performance desktop inside a laptop. Again, I can't really fault anything on HP for this because their cooling solution is more than ample. It definitely spins up and you can start hearing the fans, not obnoxiously loud, but they're loud somewhere between maybe the 40 and 60 decibel range when this thing starts spinning up uh, to keep the machine cool. But that's to be expected if you're doing high-end gaming graphics on high settings and you're playing for long stints that there's going to be heat generated and it's going to need to go somewhere. As far as the keyboard goes, I absolutely love it. I think it's a joy to type on this machine. It has a lot of RGB settings. You can set them in Windows only. Unfortunately, there may be software to edit them within Linux, but I wasn't able to find any. Uh, but you can edit it in Windows and it'll keep those settings over to when you boot into Linux. So if you want it to pulse or breathe or any of those different lighting effects, you can do that. If you want to turn off RGB, of course, you can do that as well. But as far as typing and control, I enjoy typing on this very much. Maybe not as nice as the Elite Dragonflies keyboard, but certainly much better than most keyboards on most PC laptops out there. So originally Fedora 34 came out, Fedora 33 I've been using on most of my machines. Fedora 34 came out, it's a Linux variant for those who are not used to other operating systems besides Windows. And I did have issues where randomly on different boots into Fedora, the trackpad would not be accessible at all. Otherwise, everything seemed to be working really well. And the gaming performance was 
quite poor. And this was strange because it was showing me I was actually utilizing the discrete graphics within Fedora. It installed the proprietary drivers in there to get this to work, but the gaming performance was just sad. Thankfully, I found something called Garuda Linux, which is an Arch-based Linux out there that was recommended on the Destination Linux show from a listener. And once I installed that, which is what you see here, I've had nothing but the best time on Linux in this machine, which leads me to the con that I really want HP to focus on. They're behind in this realm. When you have Dell, Lenovo, and all your other competitors really making sure that their hardware is compatible with Linux, and even selling pure Linux versions of their laptops, not having hardware compatible in Linux with huge distros like Fedora, Ubuntu, those type of things is a real shame. So I hope they fix that in future iterations and start utilizing some of the components or making sure their drivers are available in the Linux variant. But at least I can say Garuda Arch Linux on this. If you're going to run Linux and you want to have this HP Omen, that's your best route is to go with an Arch variant. I absolutely have no issues with the trackpad. The gaming performance has been stellar. So the last couple of things I'll talk about is the trackpad. It's nice and large, which I appreciate. You don't see that on a lot of PC laptops, although they're all starting to finally catch on of making a bigger trackpad. This one is quite large and it's very smooth and easy to utilize. Uh, the trackpad's nice. It's not the best trackpad I've ever used, but it's very responsive. It's nice and smooth. There's not a lot of huge indention when you're pressing on it. In fact, there's none around here where you don't see it dipping into its own frame, which is something you see in a lot of cheaper laptops. So they did a good job on that. And then of course the webcam is very basic 720p and you can hear what I sound like on the webcam here. So you can see the quality of the webcam that you're getting here. It's 720p, it's fuzzy. This is a normal room lighting, but it could get you through a quick conference call, WebEx, whatever you're utilizing for work if needed, although not the perfect solution, obviously. Ample cooling. Beautiful design, very sleek. Will I keep this laptop? 100% yes. I have enjoyed the heck out of this machine. I love Linux. I use Linux as much as possible. My son loves Fortnite though, playing on his PlayStation and play together. I need to have another PlayStation or I just boot into Windows in this and use it for that one game Fortnite. And this thing screams in that game, screams in it. 144 frames per second easily. It's just a really nice laptop. And then I can boot it right into Garuda Linux and do the rest of my work. I can work in Blender. I can work in Caden Live. I can do my video rendering. It's really a powerhouse. And you can pick these up for a fantastic value. That's one of the interesting things about the HP Omen is they have a really nice price point, which is why I know that they probably cut some corners on some things here to deliver those high performance parts. Still keep it repairable, but at a decent price. I believe these started between eight and $1,200. But of course, you could pick one up used right now for really good value as well. So check out this laptop. Let me know in the comments below if you've experimented with the HP Omens before. This has just been a really good experience for me. The HP Dragonfly, the XP360 Spectre, and the Omen. This gives you a nice rounding of fantastic HP laptops. The other things that you need to check out, Bitwarden, who sponsors this channel, allows us to do these type of awesome things like this, the best password manager on the planet. Some people were like, no, I use LastPass and some of the others until all that recent news came out. Now everyone's jumping on the Bitwarden bandwagon. I told you all, we loved them before they ever became a sponsor. So check out bitwarden.com slash DLN. And of course, a special thanks to DigitalOcean. Go to do.co slash DLN, get a hundred dollar credit to do any of your cloud networking out there. Again, thank you so much for all the love and support. And most of all, Remember to get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe and like and subscribe to this video.